I believe we must set up three children's colonies. The aim of these colonies is, above all, to furnish us with soldiers. It was unusual in tightly knit African tribes for parentless children to be sent away, but many were orphaned because the force publique had killed their parents. These were the only state-funded schools for children in Leopold's Africa. Disease was rife and the death rate high. Several of the little girls were so sickly on their arrival that our good sisters couldn't save them, but all had the happiness of receiving holy baptism. They are now little angels in heaven who are praying for our great king. At the turn of the century, the worldwide rubber boom exploded. This is the time when electricity spreads throughout the Western world. So rubber is essential, not just for automobile tires, but for anything and everything that had to do with electric wires. And that explains why rubber prices were so high. Nowhere did the boom have a greater impact than in the Congo, where rubber vines snaked high into the rainforests that covered half of Leopold's colony. The king had gone into debt with his Congo investments, but the return on rubber would surpass all his expectations. Rubber was not the most valuable product. Ivory was much more valuable, but rubber was what mattered. Leopold financed his colony on the back of rubber. We passed a man on the road who had broken his back by falling from a tree while tapping some vines. Rubber is a sap which must be congealed to be carried. The only method the workers typically had in the forest was to spread it over their bodies as they worked. It caused excruciating pain when it was peeled away. People were afraid of this work. Nobody would agree to take this work on his own. No, they were rather arresting them chasing them up to their home, and they would tie their hands with chains and send them on the rubber job. The Red Rubber Terror began in the 1890s, two horrifying decades followed of murder and madness in return for profit. Villages were assigned exact rubber quotas, Forced to meet accelerating demands, tappers scattered widely through the jungle, often climbing trees a hundred feet off the ground. They could make a small incision at the base of the vine to tap it, or whack through the vine entirely. This produced rubber quickly, but killed the vine. In a perverse reversal of production management, tappers were severely punished for not making their quotas as well as for making their quotas, but killing the vine. The native doesn't like making rubber. He must be compelled to do it. Soldiers arrive in a village, start looting, take all the chickens, grain, goats, and finally they seize the women. These women are kept hostage until the chief brings in the required number of kilograms of rubber. Sometimes women were held hostage. Sometimes children. Sometimes elders or chiefs. The wives of villagers who resisted were killed, but often died anyway in the stockades, where food was scarce and conditions harsh. The women taken during the last raid are causing me no end of trouble. All these soldiers want one. The sentries who are supposed to watch them unchain the prettiest ones and rape them.